Hi everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to begin to talk with you about Paul's letters and um, I'd like to begin with some words of introduction to that subject and uh, start out like this. One of the really interesting and notable features of Paul's missionary work in the early Christian church of the first century is his attempt not only to form churches in the principal civic centers of the Roman Empire, but also to maintain contact with them. Paul's concern to maintain contact is highlighted for us in the New Testament in a couple of ways. First, by the summary statements we find in the book of Acts that tell us about Paul's frequent practice of returning to churches that he had formed and founded previously. You can see this in several locations in Acts. For example, if you look at Acts chapter 14 and verses 21 through 23, you see Paul returning back through churches that he formed on his way out uh, on the first missionary journey. So at the end of that first missionary journey, he returns back through those churches. You can see it again in the uh, second missionary journey in Acts 15, 36 and Acts 16, 1, um, where the... Uh, the way that Paul starts out that second missionary journey is to return through some of the churches founded on the first missionary journey. And then what's really interesting to me, the entirety of the third missionary journey, except for the stop at Ephesus, consists of return to churches that Paul had founded on the first and second missionary journeys. You read about that in Acts 18, 23 and Acts 21 through 6. The concerns that prompted Paul's return in each of these instances is often summarized in Acts rather than given in detail. But even from Luke's summaries, we can learn that Paul returned to his churches for a variety of reasons, among which were the encouragement of believers, the exhortation of believers, the organization of believers, the attempt to provide further teaching to believers, the attempt to correct believers, and sometimes, apparently, simply out of sure curiosity, Acts 15.36 says, Paul returned to churches to see how they were. Those same concerns would appear to lie behind the other evidence from within the New Testament that speaks to us about Paul's continuing concern for the churches he founded and formed. Indeed, we might say it's crucial to a correct understanding of Paul's letters, to grasp from the outset what the letters themselves make plain from their content and their form. Namely, the fact that they are letters, letters of different length and style and purpose, but real, authentic letters written to encourage, to exhort, to teach, to rebuke, to communicate with people with whom Paul desired to stay in touch. They are not, therefore, primarily theological textbooks or treatises, but rather personal documents which contain theology. They are letters written as Christians have written to each other across the centuries in an attempt to bring Christian perspective and understanding to bear on the concrete problems of discipleship. Letters written as Christians have written to each other across the centuries, but with the crucial difference that within these letters, Christians have agreed we hear not only Paul's voice, but also the voice and the counsel of the Spirit of God. But given the fact that Paul's letters in the New Testament are really letters, and given the fact that they're written to enable Paul to maintain contact with his churches in between those occasions when he was able to visit them personally, how can we go about understanding and unpacking their meaning? One of the keys to doing that, I want to suggest to you, is in what we've just discussed. If Paul's letters are really actual letters, then in comparing them with what letters of that same time look like, we should be able to understand the form and the arrangement of Paul's letters a little bit better. And if Paul's letters are written in order to enable him to maintain his relationship with different Christian communities during a period of personal absence, then gaining as much information as we can about the original development of the Christian communities to whom Paul writes and seeking to place Paul's letters accurately within the historical context of his relationship with a given Christian community 
may help us again to gain a greater understanding of the meaning of Paul's message in any given letter.